um, while I was working at the Conservancy and working on this Wilshire Boulevard project, you know, that, the stretch probably from, I would say roughly MacArthur Park or Westlake Park up through the Ambassador was kind of my favorite section and I spent a lot of time there. And, you know, I, I was involved when I was at the Conservancy in some of the battles that were going on and some of the efforts to um, really get more public support for um, preserving the site in some way or fashion, even as a school. And so um, some of the things that kind of make me sad now about it are that um, there were other opportunities that I think preservationists and also journalists and definitely the school district just didn't really think about. Um, and I think that preservation probably was in that moment where I don't think it, it was yet doing a very good job in terms of community outreach. And I think that's starting to change a lot. Um, right at the last gasp of the battles to save the ambassador site so that more portions of the building and its footprint would be utilized because that was kind of the goal. Not, not to save it as a hotel, but to use it as a school, but just to try and retain elements of its historic fabric or to use them to tell the story a little bit more poignantly. Um, and part of the plans were actually, you know, at the last moment, right, some architects um, and school planners um, who were really doing innovative work across the country stepped forward and said, wait, we'll help, we develop, we'll develop a plan. So they developed a really great uh, plan that was um, kind of modeled on a small campus, which, you know, is really more the trend than a big school, which is the way LA Unified ultimately handled that property. Um, but so they came up with some plans, but it was too late to do anything about it. Um, but also at the same, right in those same like few years from I guess like I guess it was 2004, 2005, um, people who were involved in the site where the ambassador was um, included people who had histories as labor organizers, um, and they were participating in sort of canvassing the neighborhood, and that was really interesting to me because they and I went out with people a couple of times to sort of knock on doors and talk to folks in the um, apartment buildings around that area. Um, and what was really interesting about it was, well, number one, that um, it, it was really diverse, much more diverse, I think, um, racially and socioeconomically than people ever give it credit. There are a lot of tenement buildings around there that are pretty run down, um, and so they're kind of historic, but like the question I had when I went in was, okay, if we're focusing all this attention on the ambassador, shouldn't we be focusing on how these other places, these tenement buildings, for instance, have this really long history, um, some of which is glamorous and some of which has always been um, more oriented towards working and lower middle class. And so, you know, sort of rose, you know, raised a lot of questions for me. But what was really interesting when I went around, especially with the translators, I don't speak Spanish, um, and, and there's also a really large Central American population and then you know we didn't end up when we were going around the tenement buildings there were not very many Koreans at all um, Korean property ownership was extremely high mostly on the boulevard itself um, and in fact Lee I've forgotten Mr. Lee's first name there's one property owner who had been, begun purchasing land along the boulevard all the way from downtown to that area um, when it you know, as early as, I, I want to say the late 70s, although it's really been, it was really hard to figure out the property records for it, but certainly the 80s, he snatched up huge parcel, parcels and buildings um, when it was really cheap. And still owns a lot, but a lot of it is redeveloped. So that sort of along the Wilshire Corridor, um, there's been a lot of reutilization for offices and other, other properties. And that was Korean. But the side streets at that time, at least, at least the blocks that we went around, really weren't. Um, and so, you know, that was kind of interesting because when I went to neighborhood council meetings for that area, and this was mostly to try and find community partners on this Wilshire Boulevard project here in the city, um, when I went to those meetings, there was a lot of sort of discord between different racial groups. Um, um, Korean businessmen wanted one thing. There were um, sort of an older guard of, um, of white folks who didn't like that area beginning to be called Koreatown, and it was, you know, it was being called that. They, you know, they. So there was lots of like jostling over what names 
things should be called, and also parks, because the area really desperately needs parks. So when I drive by, you know, the ambassador site, I think of what a shame that there was 23 acres that could have been utilized for a multitude of potential purposes, and instead, um, LA Unified, who I distrust entirely um, on every level, um, you know, was somehow given civic support to run something. And I, you know, it's like, we entrust so many people to LA Unified um, that it's really, fr that's frightening unto itself, but after seeing what they've done in terms of property development, that anyone would support them is sort of horrifying um, without there being intervention in some way. Like, you know, someone, you know, I still don't know why there's not a means by which some entity can step forward and serve as like some buffer, <laughs> you know, to safeguard. Um, the ways that huge bureaucracy can function. Um, but, you know, in any case, um, when I go by that 23 acre site, I think, great, that there are lots of schools functioning there and doing really interesting projects, from what I can tell. Um, but at the same time, that it's totally divorced from utilization beyond that, right? I mean, in other parts of the country, people who live in a neighborhood get to utilize school grounds. Right. It doesn't happen here, right? My kids go by school playgrounds on the weekends that are fenced off and, and like cry, right? And, um, and you know, the ambassador is one of those sites where it's like, oh my god, it's huge, huge, but you know, it has a specific use determined by a particular bureaucratic entity.